excited. Feel these nipples. Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most interesting, unique, and wild knives I've ever seen in my entire life. This is a custom coming in from Germany. Scorpio design. This is the Shapeshifter EDC. And I think a good indication of what's to come is looking at the attention to detail in this packaging before I get into the knife, because you've already seen the pictures that I shot of it. There is, is that a sticker? No, oh my goodness, what is going on here? He likes to include lots of stickers. Okay, so there's your sticker pack. But take a look at this book. I mean, this is a real indication of how much time and thought has gone into the development of this crazy knife. Basically, this is a catalog of all the variations that you can choose in the Shapeshifter lineup. What we're gonna be taking a look at today is the EDC. The EDC is more of the manageable size of all the Shapeshifter variants that are available. So on this plastic card, it teaches you how to open it and how to close it. And this is your certificate of authenticity. And the, the most important information is on here. Uh, they're individually numbered because they are all full customs. This was made in January of 23. The blade is uh, Gunther's own make of Damascus. He does forge his own steel. I think that's also really, really wonderful. And a big part of what separates this from any companies that would choose to cheaply knock it off, there'd be an immense difference between the quality and the effort that's put into this than anybody that chose to knock it off. You've got the handle made out of OD Green Micarta, and then the liners made of 6AL4V Titanium. Now, I think it's time to get into the knife without any further ado. You also get uh, some lubricating and protective oil as well. Let's get into the actual knife itself. Not crazy about the Ziploc packaging, but uh, everything else was, was so incredibly well thought out. Now, you do have to be very, very cautious as you're getting to know this knife. Because as you see, the blade slides through the handle. And if you're not holding it properly, you are going to slice the living hell out of yourself. And I'll be honest with you. I have sat on this knife for over a week because I didn't want to be that guy that cuts himself in the video while I'm trying to demonstrate it. Speaking of that, I want to give a huge shout out and a big thank you to my good buddy Alex Tissot from the Watch and Cut YouTube channel. Um, Alex and I have been friends for a few years. This was one of his grail knives. He finally obtained it just a few months ago. And uh, he offered it to me and, and, our, and our mutual friend, Dirk Werning, and said, hey, do you want to check it out and, and get a kind of a feel for how crazy this damn knife is? And of course, we both jumped on it. So Dirk has his review on his channel. Now I'm doing mine. Alex obviously got his up first. And I have some... I have some thoughts. I have some initial thoughts before it arrived, the initial thoughts when it first arrived, and where I've landed on it now. When I first saw it, I thought this is probably the most ridiculous thing that I've ever seen in my entire life. It's unnecessary. It looks dangerous. It's just, I don't know. I don't get it. But that doesn't mean I didn't want to actually still play with it because it is that different. You see how close that can come to cutting you? It is that wild and that different. When it first arrived, I let it sit 
in the in the postal box that it arrived in for probably three or four days without even touching it. I'm like, man, I just I, I don't know that I'm ready for this. It's just so weird. It's so out there. And that's probably how you're reacting to it as you're watching it, as you're seeing me manipulate the knife. You're like, yeah, I have zero interest in a knife that could poke me with the tip and then slice me the entire length of the uh, of the cutting edge. But if you're careful, if you're paying attention to what you're doing, then you don't have to worry about that. And that's something that I've learned. I've also learned that closing it is a lot easier than I initially thought because you do not have to manipulate the lock in order to close it. The lock is there simply so that you can handle this knife safely in the closed position and never have to worry about that blade coming through the handle and cutting you open. So once you release the lock, which I always forget which way it goes, then you just simply begin the opening process. And then you're simply overcoming the geometry here where the two port, two ports, two parts of the handle come together and it friction opens. And the cool thing is, this is rock solid, man. That's not going nowhere. What you really have to do is just kind of hold it like this and you're going to push down or up, depending on the orientation, on the blade. And then you just simply slide it back in place. And when you close it, you'll hear that lock engage. It's like a little ting. I don't know if I can get that to show up on my camera or not, but maybe you'll hear it. Here we go. That's unlocking it, sliding it closed, and here we go. It's a very subtle sound, but it is there. Crazy. Just, it's, it is a magnificently weird knife. And I'm going to be honest with you, I've been playing with this now for several days, and I'm at this point now where I want one for myself. And it's, it's so bizarre because I've done a complete 180. I went, eh, it's not my kind of thing, but yeah, I'd still like to share it with my audience because I like to expose you guys to unique and fun things. But now I, I, I mean, I went from going, eh, it's, it's, it's a cool piece to kind of research to now, yeah, I kind of want one of these. Now, if you're looking at this as a tactical folding knife of any sort, that's not really the approach to take. I look at this as a fixed blade knife that happens to transform in a way that makes it a bit more compact. You throw it in the leather sheath, which I wouldn't do a, a drop leg leather sheath like this. I would have my own sheath made. This is an option that's available when you purchase from Scorpio Design. You can get this sheath. It's very, very, very well made. However, it's just not my personal carry style. When I carry a fixed blade or anything like that, I don't like it to go down from my belt, down my leg. I like to carry it horizontal. So I would probably just have my sheath guy make me a horizontal carry version because this is absolutely the kind of knife that I would enjoy the living shit out of. And you pull this thing out in front of somebody, knife person or not, they're going to be super interested in it. They're going to look at this and go, what in the hell did you just do? I always forget which way the lock goes. Sorry about that, guys. And by the way, when you start handling it more often, you figure out ways to keep your hand away from the cutting edge. And it's a lot less scary. That's a very satisfying feeling, by the way, as you're kind of sliding it in and out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Giggity. Okay, sorry. Ah. The only thing I don't really like about this knife is the material selection. Um, Alex is very diverse in his collection. He likes a lot of different materials. I just, you've heard me say this for over a decade now, I really, really, really don't like Micarta. Now, it does make this nice and lightweight, and it is going to age well over time. It's going to it's going to really change its feel and its coloration over the years as he owns it and carries it. But 
for me, I'd rather do something like, you know, the whole thing being titanium instead of being micarta over titanium with the blade in the middle, or maybe do it in carbon fiber, something like that. I think this in carbon fiber would take on a completely different attitude, and I think that's pretty damn exciting. Now, I've had a chance to discuss a few things with Gunther, who is the maker of these knives, who is Scorpio Design, and we went over a few things just that I had in my own curiosities, because I even told him, I said, I look at this more as a fixed blade knife that has an additional manipulative quality to it, more so than a folding knife. He still he he looks at it, his design as a folding knife. He wanted to create something unique and different in the world of folding knives. I look at it as more practical than a folding knife. I look at it on the practical level of a fixed blade knife because once you have this opened up, that's what this is. This is basically a fixed blade knife. And man, it's unlike absolutely everything else I've ever handled. Now, what I'd like to do is go back to my standard video format where we'll do the TLDW, then I'll throw the specs up on the screen, and then we'll go later on into story time and my personal thoughts and my Q&A session with Gunther to kind of give you some backstory to this design, to this knife, and to the work that he does so that you have a full understanding of what this is all about. So, starting off with the TLDW, the pros. Pros, number one, the very first thing at the top of my mind is uniqueness. There is just nothing else out there in the world like this. Nothing feels like this in the open or closed position. Nothing operates like this. And I love unique things. It's always nice when you can find something special. Another thing that I would consider a pro is the fact that this is a sole authorship knife, meaning that Gunther is making every component of this knife. I'm sure he sources the micarta from somewhere, but I don't know where. But he is forging his own Damascus. This is a really, really intricate looking um, twist Damascus, beautifully done. It's a, it's a low layer twist Damascus, which I like because you've really got a big standout between the bands. It looks really, really good. He has completely developed this idea. Brought it to fruition in a number of designs. This being the EDC design, he's got kitchen knives and all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, you got to check out his website. There is some crazy, crazy shit that he has developed. Another pro for me is the ease of use. Now, you do have to get used to the mechanics of it, but that's that's almost anything you own these days. It's like you almost can't drive a car off the dealership lot anymore without sitting in it for an hour and learning where all the, the, the buttons are and what touchscreen functions there are and where the navigation is at and where the seat controls are and everything's you know, like a learning experience. It's not, nothing is immediate anymore. So in, in terms of modern concept things, I still think this is pretty damn easy to use. All you got to do is learn that you don't have to do anything to close it except for uh, break the friction that's right in here. And to open it, you just have to unlock it, slide it out, and keep your damn fingers out of the way. That's the most important part. I don't know why there aren't Band-Aids in the packaging, but there should be. There really, really should be. Now, Gunther says he's been making knives about 25 years. And he started, like many of us did, as a hobby. So he's making knives for himself, his friends, his family, all that kind of stuff, without really worrying about it paying the bills right away. And what he's done over that 25 years is create really interesting and unique ways of making knives. Even his fixed blade knives, let's just put that out there. Even his fixed blade knives are wonderful and creative because he's doing uh, in integral designs. So he's using solid bar stock, round stock even, 
and doing some really, really cool stuff. Nothing is run of the mill or basic or like anybody else's. When he first started, he was uh, just making wood handles and scales and stuff for prefabricated blades. So he would buy like, you see like these knife kits that are on certain websites where you can buy a blade. It's already heat treated. Maybe it's even already ground. It's ready to go. And all you've got to do is make a handle for it. That's how he started. And as he developed, he realized, hey, I've got a real knack for this. I've got some cool ideas. I think I can develop a, a unique business model. So he decided <clears throat> that he would quit his job as a carpenter and he started studying metal design. He started learning metallurgy. He started learning how to forge and the importance of heat treat and all the various things that go into actual making of steel. So now he's making his own steel. He's forging his own steel. Now he's got to come up with designs that interest him enough to keep making them and interest the market enough where people will actually spend their hard-earned money. And that's where the shapeshifter came from. Now, again, this is the shapeshifter EDC. So this is the smaller, lighter, easier to carry version of the shapeshifter model. He started making them back in around 2006, 2007 is when he began prototyping them. And what you see before you is the latest iteration. Now, he hasn't made very many of these. I mean, what was the number on this one? Number 198. So he's made 198 of them since 2006. That's not a lot of knives. However, he's constantly refined and redesigned the knife to make it as perfect as possible. And that's what makes this so great. When you get it in hand, when you put this in your hand, you're like, there's nothing about this that I would change. For me, because I have really big hands, I'd like to have maybe a little bit of a longer handle on it, but I certainly own many compact folders that my pinky just kind of sits at the end of. So it's not really a deal breaker, but this is ergonomically amazing. It feels so good in the hand. And that was another thing that I worried about when Alex was sending it to me before I got it in my hand, I'm like, there is no way that that thing's going to be comfortable. It's just going to be feel like this weird, delicate little thing. Now, it has a light weightness to it that gives you the sensation that it might be delicate. But there is nothing about this knife as you're holding it and as you're using it that feels delicate in the slightest. Now, if you were interested in buying a shapeshifter on the EDC version. Keep in mind, these are about a thousand bucks in Damascus. They're not inexpensive. And you would have to order directly through Gunther. So I'm going to put all of his information here on the screen uh, throughout the video and in the description down below so that you can reach out to him, you can contact him, and you can get an order in. And remember, you can dictate whatever it is that you want. I'm the kind of person, I like to kind of let the, the knife maker have their creative freedom and just do, hey, make a maker's choice. Maybe say, hey, these are my favorite colors or themes or I want it bright and shiny or I want it kind of military looking or I want it kind of post-apocalyptic. Here's the basic idea and you just roll with it and do what you want to do. That's the most fun for the makers usually is when we have that creative freedom to just make however we want to make it. Now, I don't know what his wait time is. You can go to his website, and it may say somewhere on there. I'm not too sure. But check it out anyway. Hey, guys. Sorry for the interruption, but I promise I will make this very, very brief. I want to thank those of you that have joined and become channel members. You are helping to support the channel and helping to continue the growth. And if you've been considering supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form, because I do not have channel sponsors, uh, I don't shill anybody's products, I don't get paid for anything, I don't do affiliate links, so everything is completely self-funded. If you'd like to help out and watch the channel grow and get more great content coming your way, please do consider becoming a member. One of the other interesting things about this knife is the fact that uh, Gunther actually has a German patent on his mechanism, on his design. So it is protected to some degree, at least in his home country. Look how cool that is. 
And it's not often that you'll actually hear knife makers say, I have a patented design, whether it be a lock mechanism or uh, an overall design or something. So that's a major achievement, and I think it's pretty damn cool. Let's give you some close-ups on this bad boy. So I think it's pretty important to see just how much work goes into this. Let me go ahead and pop it open so you can see the mechanism as it's working. And by the way, this is gliding so wonderfully, so smooth. The only thing that you'll really feel is there's a guide that's in between the handle segments there. And that guide is what goes through this blade window. And because this is Damascus that's been etched, I can feel a little bit of the pattern of the Damascus inside of that channel. But other than that, everything about this operation is glass smooth. I love how this locks into place. And it's so solid, like you feel it and you hear it. And there's a little reverberation, almost like a tuning fork, because of the top bar of this window cutout or this blade cutout. I don't know if we can really see how the lock operates or not. Yeah, you're not really going to see where it's releasing, I don't think. But it's so wildly different. It's, this is the kind of knife that when you've got it in your hands, you tend to just sit there and stare at it. And I'm kind of doing that right now, so I apologize. I'm not giving you as much <laughs> verbal feedback as I should be for a review. But you really do sit here in awe of the mechanism, the way that everything has been fitted as well. By the way, I think it's very important to mention it's not just that he's come up with a funky, cool mechanism. It's that all of these components are so well-fitted, it's almost seamless. And that may not always be the easiest with a softer material like Micarta up against titanium. But he's done a, a very, very, very good job of the fitment of the materials as a knife and as well as the fitment of everything so that it works well mechanically. I mean, look at this mechanism. Oh, I just locked it, damn it. Imagine having to concept all of this, to, to design all of these individual small components that are in the frame, and then prototyping it, and how many he had to go through to actually make this function. And that to me is one of the most exciting things about knife making is seeing people with creative vision doing creative things, not just off the shelf, cookie cutter, ran, you know, everyday designs, but something that is truly unique. This may be so funky that you may never consider owning one because it's just too different from what you like to purchase and what you like to collect. And I understand that. But you get to a certain point in collecting, or at least many of us do, where you'll buy curios. You'll buy things that you go, you know what, I may not really ever carry this thing and hard use this thing, hard use this thing, but it's something that I feel is a great representation in the evolution of knife making. And I, I want to have a representation of that step in my collection. And that's, for me, that's a lot of what this is. I don't think it's something that I would carry very often just because it is a little bit awkward. It is a little bit different. And it's certainly not quick to deploy. This is not going to be your go-to tactical self-defense weapon or anything like that. But for me, it's more about, I believe that a knife design like this has some historical significance because it is so different. It is so cool. And I do like to buy knives whenever I can that are sole authorship or that maker is putting his 
every skill set that he's learned, he has put into this knife. As a designer, obviously overcoming all the, the how I just can't imagine how difficult was it was to design, to being a bladesmith, forging his own Damascus, and then being a knife maker and making all of this come together. There is a shitload that goes into making a knife like this. This is not, you know, we can all appreciate Sabenzas and XM18s and, and things like that. And it's not to take away from the fact that, you know, it took them a long time to develop their knives and perfect their knives. But this is on a different level. This is engineering. This is bladesmithing. This is knife making. And... All of these things come together in one knife. That's kind of nuts. It's kind of crazy. And that's why I think it's something special. Am I going to have one of these in my collection? I don't know. Could be a while. It's a thousand bucks. You know, we all got to consider all the, uh, <laughs> the, the current world economic situation. I don't get to spend the amount of money on knives that I used to. However, it's one that I can look at and go, that's a solid investment. And when I feel like I can just, you know, toss the thousand dollars into a knife that I may or may not ever carry, this is probably going to be that knife. And there's quite a few on the grail list. That's, that's for sure. And not all of them are going to be daily use EDC hard use knives. So you, you, you kind of have to pick and choose when you're spending that money on a knife that may get less utilitarian use than others. So then it becomes more of a want than a need. But I think this is going to rank up pretty high in that because, man, it's just, it's so friggin' cool. And now that I've handled it, and I think that was the big important thing, now that I've handled it, I know that it's solid, it's secure, it's unbelievably well made. It's not just a cool concept. It's actually a very, very well made knife that... I think would last probably a very, very long time in my collection. I certainly don't think I would ever become bored with it. I mean, look how friggin' cool that is, man. <laughs> All right, that's it for me on the Shapeshifter EDC from Scorpio Design. If you have any questions, put them down below. I'd love to, to get back to you and answer anything, anything that you've got. Again, uh, the information that's been on the screen and in the description down below is where you can uh, visit and order one of these for yourself. Also, check him out on Instagram as well. A lot of cool stuff in his repertoire. I got to tell you, as I flip through that catalog, looking from the oldest to the newest, down to the little tiny tech, the neck knife and everything, very, very, very cool stuff. So anyway, that's it for me for now, guys. Thank you so very much. And I'll see you on the next video.